Check sound, pretty girl. We're are gonna we, start are rolling. We, already, we are yeah. rolling. And we're live already. We're okay. live already. It takes a few minutes for it to chop to to uh, this. kick in. <laughs> That's the word. Um, I'm working on it. We's out in the middle of nowhere. Appreciate you guys being here an hour later. Timo, what's happening? All right, we have sound. We're heading back into Montana. Okay, definitely have sound. Coming up uh, by the Missouri River right now. Beautiful ride so far. Crazy news this week. I'm sure some of you guys have watched some of this. Some of you probably haven't. This is, uh, I, I, we really dig Montana. We, we have our place sold in Montana, but I dig me some South Dakota, man. This is even more wild, more wild open than, than Montana is where we live. Down here, I mean, we've had four cars pass us in the last hour. You see, look at us, look at us, look at this. The Missouri River's to our left. And it's been like this for the last hour drive. Two hours. Anyway, news you can use. News you might have missed. Let's start off with World War III. Iran and Israel. Let's start off with that. A little bit of uh, background. Some of you guys, again, the, the public, I can't change that. Yeah, we're running off your Wi-Fi. Well, let me let me keep going here. It's, it is what it is. I don't want to shut the stream off for that. Um, so, right now, Israel and Iran, they were saying last night they thought the war would kick off last night because 47... 6 said, uh, I think one word yesterday, don't, to, to Iran. Does anybody remember what happened in 2016? Does anybody remember what happened in 2016 with Iran and the USA? Does anybody remember it? And keep in mind, during uh, 45's presidency, you didn't hear much about ISIS because he just didn't play that. You didn't hear much about them threatening everything else. Now the FBI is saying, oh, we have threats with ISIS. In what are you doing? Peace. You have threats with ISIS all over the U.S. Well, you, you guys are in charge of all that. You've got people in cities in America saying death to America. And yet you post yesterday in Pennsylvania <laughs> a bunch of feds dressed as white supremacists. You can always tell it's feds because they're all in shape. You don't ever see... You don't ever see a group of people in America gather up 10, 15, 20, 30 of them that are in shape unless they're CrossFitters or unless they're feds. Because in a normal group of people, you're going to have over half of them going to be 100 pounds overweight. And they're telling you that the biggest threat to America is the white supremacists. And yet you have cities in America saying death to America. I don't know if you guys watched yesterday. A woman in California, she was at a city council meeting. She's a, I believe she's a Pakistani Muslim. And she threatened to take out, in other words, we'll come to your houses and we will K-I-L-L you on camera in front of the whole crowd. They're getting that confident with saying what they want to say. She got arrested, but they're getting that confident in our country to say these things because they don't think they're going to be arrested. No different. And actually what happened in, uh, in Dearborn, Michigan was in Rashida Tlaib's uh, city. When they said when they had the big meeting and or big uh, 
public event and said death has began chanting death to America. That's her that's her area. And she got mad when she was questioned about it. And yet the, the FBI tells us you need to be worried about everybody else. What happened? Let's go back to my point. I chased a little bit of a rabbit there, but I was setting us up. What did we do in 2016? Put it in the comments if you remember that. What did we do in 2016 with Iran? What did America do? Eight years ago, what did we do? We had sanctions against the country. They were on their knees financially, economically because of the sanctions. And yet, what did our government do? You didn't vote for it. You, didn't, you weren't asked. You're responsible for the debt, though. What did they do? What did they do? Somebody type in the comments. There's a 10-second delay. DW1, send me, send us, pardon the pronoun, send us your shipping address to LT. YTLTA at protonmail.com. I will send you a lanyard. I'll put it in the comments. We sent Iran $400 million of cash. Cash. During the time that we were saying we have sanctions on you, you're doing the wrong thing, we're not going to support what you're doing, so we're going to put these sanctions in place, banking sanctions, food sanctions, etc. Oh, but then the government says we're going to send them $400 million in cash. Non-traceable, by the way. Non-traceable. So DW1, you see, the, you see the, uh, the address, the email address. Send us your shipping information. We'll send you a lanyard. It'll be a lifewildopen.com with, with the Montana state animal, the grizzle bear, the grizzle bear on the lanyard. <laughs> We will send you two, one for you and one for whoever you want to give it to. And yet eight years later, we are worried about them attacking us. Why would we be worried about them attacking us? Now let's go back to number two, the second piece of the second piece of uh, of news you might have missed this week. El Camino for sale. The road. <clears throat> You guys might not have seen that. There's a beautiful El Camino for sale back there in the in the cornfield. You saw that uh, 46 said he's gonna he's gonna forgive another couple billion dollars of student loan debt. Second time he said it. The state, I think the Supreme Court overruled overruled it the first time. This time they're saying it again, but they're saying it knowing full well that it probably won't pass. But all the people that think it'll affect them will still vote that party line and then the the election will happen and he'll blame it on the, the Supreme Court overruling it. Let's talk about this though because it goes back to how little people really pay attention in America to anything other than the government's giving, giving it to me. It's free. Let me go ahead and do that. We're going we're gonna to wipe out student loan for all these people that got student loans. All these people that went and got whatever they got, and they got a degree in public service that pays them $18,000 a year. How was that originally set up? How was that originally set up to function? It was originally set up that they were going to take the interest payments from those student loans and they were going, they, the government, that you have no say so in how they run things. You think you do because you go to the polls and you, you cast a vote electronically and you think that matters. Well, that money for those student loans was supposed to get paid back or pardon me, supposed to take that interest payment that was getting paid back and use that for the Affordable Care Act, what they used to call Obamacare. It was supposed to pay that portion, I think 30, 40% of that was supposed to pay Obamacare back. And even when Obamacare was put in place, the GAO, the Government Accounting Office, they themselves said, 
we're not counting certain things that are part of Obamacare. So you were being misled about how little it was going to. So now if we forgive the student loans, if 46 even did that, just wiped it out, Obamacare, ACA, the Affordable Care Act, your costs are going to go up considerably. Not just a little bit, not just a wee bit, considerably. And they've gone up considerably since the inception of that program. Because anytime the government gets involved in things, they're going to, they've never run anything efficiently. Hell, the budget is, is upside down right now to a point it can never be recovered. But they want to take, they want to take student loan debt and wipe it out. I saw this week, I saw this past week on one of the socials, a 70 year old woman, she had taken some student loan debt out and she had paid it back. I want to say, I'm, I'm going from memory, so I know I'm probably wrong, but it's close enough. I want to say that she took her student loans out in the 90s or 2000s. That's news you might have missed. You might have missed that news that waiving these student loans would just make the ACA go up. The Affordable Care Act price. Waiving these student loans would just make the ACA go up. The Affordable Care Act prices go up. Because they're never going to tell you what the truth is about everything. They're just going to do things and then they're going to spin it to you. Just like they're spinning this against the American public that we need to all be against each other and all this division. Now, another piece of news you might have missed, and I'll put these links in the description of the video when we stop tonight, but it'll be a minute, it'll be a couple hours. Let me, let me talk about this. Two quick things. I will, it won't be quick. It won't be quick because we're going to let you enjoy some South Dakota scenery. We're, we're losing it. get up to a, a major city here in a minute so we're getting close to being on 94 we're back how many bars we got we got two but you're cutting out a little bit clean now uh three bars okay i think we're good Everybody nowadays is a victim. You guys know that. Everybody's a victim. That's how they move through life. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. Every one of your ex-girlfriends, dudes, calls you a narcissist. <laughs> Every one of them. All of them. It's a new word. It's a new, it's a new catchphrase. When I hear a dude call somebody a narcissist, I'm like, man, you are so feminine, it's beyond belief. But everybody's a victim i saw a video last night and i'll post it in the description of this video when we stop tonight it'll be a little bit couple hours down the road and it was the most incredible thing i've seen we're still cutting out there we're still cutting out The proper man term is psycho. I agree with that. I agree with that. When I hear a dude call another somebody else a, a narcissist, I'm like, do you use pads or do you use a tampon? Which one do you use? Everybody's a victim. Everybody else is, is, is the reason you're not succeeding. The first thing I want to I want to talk to you guys about. Let me uh, let me see if I can hold on one second. We're still back. Sorry about that. We're right in the middle of nowhere, South Dakota. You know, because all those satellites in in space, <coughs> all those satellites in space aren't, aren't connecting to us. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm I'm coughing. <laughs> satellites are bullshit. Um, We're still cutting out. Hey, 
just hold your fingers on it. Like I did. I'll let you guys enjoy the ride for a minute. We're getting up here to a major city. Swag Money Unlimited, thank you for the super. I'm going to just let you guys enjoy the ride for a minute while we uh, get closer to the main city. How many bars we got? Oh man, sitting out front in his razor. <laughs> in his razor scooter. These people up here are cool. You know, Montana was not... At that point, I was at 15% ejection fraction. So we laid up in a hotel for two months getting the work done. Do you know the place we bought in South Dakota the same day we signed the papers? We got an offer on our house in Montana. I don't think I'm connected. Actually, it was only the computer that was connected to you. I don't think this is connected to you. You can turn your Wi-Fi off. That might be that might be hurting some of us but when i tell you that the same day we were signing documents on the house up here in south dakota and we did this because we have the one day residency in south dakota and south dakota doesn't have a state tax they have a concealed and uh, open carry uh, without a permit and it's a reciprocal permit across many, many states. And it's still a wild open, a wild open area. Montana's good, but Montana still has all the state tax and all that. And then you see where we are. Like this is this is what we're in the middle of almost every day up here in, in, in South Dakota. You see how wide open this is. I'll I'll turn the camera. It's like this, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. It's crazy too, since we turned the stream on past us on the road than we had seen in the last hour. That's okay though. We're getting close to a major city. But I, I kid you not, we were sitting down to, to sign papers for the place up here where the trust was buying. And uh, we got an offer on the place all cash for the place we have in Montana all cash because people realize there's not many states you can go to anymore there's not many states you can go to anymore that are are uh, safe I'm not saying Montana South Dakota Wyoming are safe these are states that open carry are legal. These are states that concealed carry are legal without a permit. And you got to welcome to South Dakota, welcome to Montana, welcome to Wyoming, consider everybody armed. And I love that mindset. I know, I know Hurricane loves that mindset too. I do, I do. Did you want to say a few things since you've been trying to handle all the... What? Yeah, I don't, I don't even have to. I don't even have the internet on my phone, but you seem to be live, so you should be fine. I can't tell, yeah, anyway. Um, no, it was good, and I absolutely love being out here, away from the cities. I love being out in the middle of nowhere. The least amount of people is, is yeah, it's just beautiful, you know. The town of less than a thousand people is right up my, my alley, my cup of tea, you know. So. I can't imagine ever wanting to go back ever wanting to go back into a major city and oh, live no thank you can't imagine it you saw in chicago this week that kid uh fired 11 rounds at the police and they were just doing a basic traffic stop and it's been turned including by the mayor who watched the footage the mayor watched the footage 
And he still said, I can't believe we lost another one. Well, if you fire 11 times at the police, you got to assume you're going to get fired. Going back to everybody's a victim. Everybody's a victim, man. Okay, we're almost at 94, so we should we should get a little bit better a little bit better signal here. But a black father took his two sons, who in the video they look like they're about 12 and 15, somewhere in that ballpark. Tall, lanky kids. And he walks them into a into a either a CVS or a Walgreens, one of those type of stores. They had stolen something an hour before, and he found out about it. And he grabbed them both, and he took them back in the store. He first asked and said, "Hey, my I've got my my sons here. I want you to make sure that you never let them know they stole it." And he said, I want to apologize for them. And she said, well, the big manager's back there. And he walked down, the, the father took his kids and he walked them down the aisle. And they went to the, the female lead manager and he went through the same thing. Hey, I apologize, they stole this stuff and we're bringing it back. And he said, I don't want you to ever let them back in the store unless, unless one of their parents is with them. Don't ever let them back in here. Everything he did was good. I'm going to give you guys a second, and, and again, you're not. I'm not going to play the video because we're driving. But <clears throat> that's what the father said to the people behind the counter and the lady in the that was in the aisle that was the main manager. Tell me if I'm wrong on this. The only thing I would have done different in all of that, I think it was a very phenomenal video, and the father recorded it all. He recorded his sons. He recorded their faces. He made sure they were on video. I'm sure he shared it to his own social media to put some embarrassment behind that. Behind that, The only thing I would have done different, I would have had the kids be the ones talking. I would have had those two young men being the one apologizing. <coughs> I would have, before I walked them in, said when we walk in, you're both you're going to both going to apologize to the people behind the counter you're going to apologize to the manager and you're going to tell the manager don't ever, ever let me back in the store unless i'm with my parents and don't ever just kick just considered me kicked out from this point on unless i'm with my parents i would have had the children say that but it was still a phenomenal video because so few parents ever go to that length anymore Hell, so few dads are, are so little involved in their kids' lives. Some of you, that, that was the most, that was probably the most South Dakota thing I've seen today. You guys couldn't see it. We just went by a big barn next to a big, a big field, and they had a horse that they were doing something to, and there were three cattle dogs laying down, circling the horse, <laughs> like protecting the horse while they're working on it. Anyway. Some of you folks know Charleston White. If you don't, you can you can uh, look look him up on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. He's a black guy that really like he really he really spits some some fire when he when he talks, and he was talking about how his own mother, who had dropped out of high school, ended up getting pregnant. How she took him back into the to the high school when he left early one day with it with a cousin of his and they went out and got up to no good and got up to some trouble well charleston didn't get caught the cousin did the cousin got expelled he said and my mama took me back into the high school <coughs> here's a woman that didn't have a high school education but she raised us to understand there was a right and a wrong and he said she dragged and he he uses more profanity than I'm going to use on this stream. He said, and my, my mother grabbed, grabbed, my, grabbed me up and took me back to the high school. <clears throat> and she said, you're going to kick him out because he was with his cousin when all this happened. So I want you to kick him out. And then he got caught for something and got sent to jail or got sent to juvie or something. Juvie being juvenile detention. But I think he was jailed. 
<laughs> and he said they offered to let him out after like six months or eight months. And he said, and my mother told them, no, 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 you leave him in for the full duration of his term. You leave him in so he learns a lesson. <clears throat> and he was talking about how that was the best thing that ever happened to him. You don't see many parents that treat their kids that way anymore. They wipe their little baby's butts and they apologize for their baby. And the kid never talks and never apologizes for themselves. And, and that's one of the things the military made me stand up and do was to take ownership when I was, because I went in at 17. And that's one of the things the military did do. I wouldn't recommend you go in the military nowadays. I wouldn't recommend that. No. I would recommend you go to the oil field and learn how to drive a truck and become, if you're a dude, become a man. Because the oil field will get the, will get the little, the little biatch out of you. I'm not going to say normal trucking will do that, but the oil field will. <laughs> I would say rather than going to the military, go to the oil field and drive. Now, you can't do that till you're 21. Well, you could. You could drive in intrastate in like North Dakota for two years or, th or four years, but three years, 18 to 21, so three years. I'd say go do that to get the little, the little biatch out of you if you're a man. Can't speak for the women. I think it would be the same thing. <laughs> At least for good women like me. <laughs> People are soft, man. They, they are. are soft. They are. <laughs> they are soft. So that's that's the news you might not have heard so far this week. Talking about Iran, talking about the trying to forgive all the student loans that the interest is supposed to be used to pay off the Affordable Care Act. All this money that the, it comes from. And matter of fact, I think I want to say, I want to say the Pentagon this week announced. And I could be wrong on who, on which department, but I want to say the Pentagon this week announced that they cannot account for over, let's just say, for billions of dollars that have been given to them. They can't account for billions of dollars that have been given to them for different programs. I want to say the same thing was said by California. They can't, and it might have been California. It might not be the Pentagon. It might have been California. They can't account for billions of dollars that were given to them for programs. I think one of the things that needs to, and again, I, we can talk about I think, and it should be done, it should be this, it should be that. What you know that with this this oh the FISA the FISA was renewed, so they can go in and they can uh, the government can go in and, and and probably listen to my phone calls now based on streams like this that I do. <laughs> but the FISA was renewed. They can go into your bank account and they can they can watch you make transactions. They want to know if you did more than six hundred dollars out of Venmo, PayPal cash app and yet the millions and millions that they're sending to all these different countries they can't account for and politicians have one of the best trading records in the stock market of any professional in the world politicians do in america and some of those politicians have been on a hundred and sixty thousand dollar a year salary or 120,000 or 200,000 and they're worth hundreds of millions of dollars now and not one of them is standing up for any of us you guys are voting along party lines thinking it's gonna matter and I think it was Jesse Ventura oh there's a name I think it was Jesse Ventura he was elected governor he said you guys all believe in the and again he was a professional wrestler too i don't watch professional wrestling but he was a navy seal professional wrestler blah 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 became the governor of minnesota don't you know you hear a lot of that accent up here by the way the don't you know accent don't you know <laughs> and he said himself he said he didn't understand the level he said every government agency had deep state embedded in it and he said when he 
once he won, he was sat down by them and that he was he was given a briefing. And he said, you think you think there's a there's a Republican and Democrat party? He said, they're all the same. He said, it's the same, you know, right wing, left wing. Somebody else said that in one of my streams. Right wing, left wing, it's all the same bird. You want to say bird? Say bird. Bird. It's all the same bird. It's all the same bird on the right wing, the left wing, same bird. And you all believe that it matters which way you vote. Here's another piece of news you might not have heard this week. That $1.3 billion lottery, there's been two times, the two biggest drawings in the lottery, in the Powerball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one was delayed by nine hours. One was delayed by three hours. They were both the first and second largest drawing numbers. And the one that was recently drawn, that was 1.3, that wasn't the biggest. I think the biggest was two point something billion. But the one that happened last Saturday, initially they said there were five winners. And then two hours later, they said there was three winners. And this is from a lady who was at one of the stores who was printing off the tickets. And then they said there was two winners and then after, I think, a three-hour delay, it went down to one winner in Oregon, I believe. And if you believe that, I have some oceanfront land to sell you in South Dakota. And it's really, really nice oceanfront land. Because, again, it's all done online. What do you know? How can you track it? You can't. No different than when they were giving out Happy Meals way back. If you guys remember that news story... And uh, they were doing something with giving them out and and doing some kind of a drawing or some kind of giving people lottery lottery type tickets, and it was all it was all just it was all just lining somebody's pocket that had an inside track to all of that. And that's not a that's not a good rendition or good retelling of the story, but it was one of the major chains of burger outlets, and it was all. It was all an online thing and somebody from internally had code and they were they were controlling things and they were getting money dropped off into their bank account. Think about that. The two largest drawings in the Powerball, it's all electronic. One was delayed, the largest was delayed by nine hours, the other was delayed by three hours. And the, the count of how many people won went down, went down, went down, went down before they released the actual numbers is that just not crazy is that just not ironic and then you wonder like okay well who really who really got that money no different than, than uh, Ross Ulbrich the guy was he uh, he was the dude from uh, Silk Road right Ross Ulbrich if you guys remember that and he got busted and he was using, I think, a lot of. I, I might be, I might be mistelling this story too. He was using a lot of Bitcoin to pay for things. And one of the FBI agents that helped to take him down ended up stealing the Bitcoin or stealing a lot of the Bitcoin. And they caught him like a year later. Because anytime it's done like that, and people have an option to steal they're going to steal somebody's always going to go to the baser version of themselves when there's money involved every single time every single time we're on 94 look how look how little i think this i think this uh this rest area on the left is where uh wolverine got stuck in a snowstorm coming up the exit ramp I believe that's the same travel center, not travel center, but uh, rest area. All these things I've discussed, don't come on my channel and listen to me and believe what I tell you. Go do your own research. And there are times I remember things and I tell the story back and I misspeak on one or two things, but I identify as someone who misspeaks. And I go by and my, my pronouns are he misspeaks. Those are my two pronouns. My voice is cracking, so I must not have passed puberty yet. I need to go to the oil field and, and drive for two years and grow up.
We're going to let you enjoy some South Dakota. It's a beautiful day, man. It's gorgeous. I think it's 55, 60 degrees, shorts and flip-flops, man. Come on, yes, come on. Sir. <laughs> You guys saw the uh, the trucker in Texas, I think it was, that ran his truck. He stole a truck. He stole a tractor trailer, a tractor and a trailer, and he ran it through a DOT office, I believe, because he had failed his test. So again, goes back to the victim mentality. Let me go hurt somebody else and run my truck through their office because because I failed my test. So it's their fault. I failed my test the government has the government's creating the government is creating and the parents are creating this this type of person and this was a grown man he was looked like he was about 38 40 he might have just been an alcoholic 30 or 25 year old but he looked old and he ran his tractor a stolen tractor trailer through a dot office in retaliation he actually harmed i think 13 people and took one out because he failed his, his test and he lost his CDO. So it's their fault. Those are the worst kind of people to be around. And those kind of people, if you have them in your circle and you tolerate that, it's either because you are one of those people or you're becoming one of those people that it's always somebody else's fault. Or you could be, uh-oh, you ready for it? You could be, you ready for it? A narcissist. You're a narcissist. <laughs> Everyone is these days, don't they? And you're a narcissist. <laughs> I've gotta I've gotta I've gotta put a, a little bit of a what's that called when you make that <laughs> uh, a lisp. I've lisp, gotta put that lisp on it. You're a narcissist. <laughs> When a man calls somebody else a narcissist, I cock my head like a confused dog. <laughs> when a woman does it, I just always assume that she's a little bit like like one of the people put in the psycho. comments, a little bit psycho. <laughs> but when a man does it, I'm like, I'm a confused dog. What's crazy is Chewy, our American Akita, never ever tilts his head like he's confused. Uh oh. Because he, I think he's, I think he qualifies as a genius. I think his IQ is a good 140, 160. Smartest dog I've ever owned. Quiet man, quiet. Like a pretty cat. Now. Go on and get over, bro. I'm going below the speed limit. I know I am. Don't get mad. biggest town right there that's the biggest town i've seen in a week and a half right there that's the biggest town gotta love me some south dakota i love me some montana too but south dakota now that we're legit residents it's good We've been there a week and everybody in town knows Hurricane and Chewy. <laughs> Just from her walking. Well, I have a pretty dog. <laughs> <laughs> Two prettiest animals in town when she and when she and Chewy go for a walk. What did I tell you yesterday that someone also uh, a pickup truck pulled over on the side of the road down just down the town like it's a really small town. They just pulled out on the side of the road, they wound down the window and they just told me, man, your dog is so pretty. We were watching him pass us every day in the house and then we just had to stop and ask him what his name is. <laughs> yeah, see, she doesn't believe that dude stop and make it about the dog just to talk to her. But she'll, she'll <laughs> learn that. Apparently some ladies too. <laughs> <laughs> she'll learn that. She'll learn that. So listen, that's news you can use for this, uh, what is today, Saturday? Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Saturday. 
news you can use on a Saturday from South Dakota. You guys be good. We're going to bounce. Uh, we might not do another stream until tomorrow. I do have some streams I want to get done, but we've been a little bit busy getting ready to leave town. And uh, rocking and rolling. You guys be good. God bless you. You want to say goodbye in Chinese, yeah, pretty girl? Uh, 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 goodbye, Zai Jian, and God bless you all. Ju Fu Neiman.